I am sorry. Okay? I am so, so sorry. Shit! The film kicks off with an intense scene, two masked figures relentlessly pursuing a van. Eventually, their chase leads to a collision with an SUV, forcing it against a wall. Emerging from their vehicle, the masked duo compels the driver to step out. As they are on the verge of pilfering a bag from the trunk, an unexpected arrival disrupts the scene, a car carrying armed individuals. What follows is a chaotic gunfight. In a surprising twist, it's revealed that the masked men, Vincent and Sean, are actually undercover cops. They valiantly engage in combat against the newly arrived criminals, managing to eliminate one of them just as the police siren's wail grows louder. Sensing the impending law enforcement, the criminals hastily retreat to their cars and speed away. Seizing the moment, Vincent and Sean snatch the duffel bag and make a swift escape before the police arrive. In the getaway car, Sean makes a startling discovery, the bag holds a whopping 25 kilograms of cocaine, a stash valued at several million dollars. The officers, caught off guard by the criminal's unexpected assault, now face a new dilemma, Sean worries that the criminals might have glimpsed Vincent's face during the skirmish. Upon returning home, Vincent is greeted by a message from his wife, instructing him to give their son a ride. Unveiling a layer of Vincent's life, we discover he's an internal affairs agent immersed in a two-year investigation of a crime ring. His partner, Sean, straddles a dual role, working with both law enforcement and the criminals. The primary targets in Vincent's crosshairs are Stanley Rubino, the casino owner, and the gang's leader, Rob Novak. The plot thickens with the entrance of Agent Jennifer into the department, sporting a facial cut that captures the attention of her colleagues. Undeterred by their curious gazes, she recounts a recent encounter at a meth lab, where she was attacked by a criminal. Despite skepticism from her peers, who question her sanity and suggest a break, Jennifer remains resolute in her determination to contribute to the investigation of the illegal substance ring. Back at the department, a briefing unfolds, bringing all officers, including Vincent, up to speed on the events of the previous night's shooting. The intricate web of alliances, investigations, and personal challenges sets the stage for a gripping narrative. Vincent successfully persuades the chief to hand over the case to him and Sean. Arriving at the crime scene, Vincent and Jennifer, meeting for the first time, begin gathering crucial evidence. The air is thick with tension as both vie for control of the investigation. Later, Vincent heads to the hospital to give his son, Thomas, a ride to sports practice. During this encounter, he discovers that his ex-wife, Dina, is now engaged to another man. While Dina and Thomas are aware of Vincent's recent withdrawal due to the case, they remain in the dark about its details. In a mix of emotions, Vincent offers Dina stolen flowers, only to be infuriated when he learns about her impending marriage. However, Dina makes it clear that a reconciliation is not on the table. Vincent picks up his son, attempting to explain the reasons behind his recent absence as they drive to Thomas's sports practice. The unfolding personal dynamics add layers to Vincent's character and the complexity of the unfolding events. Out of nowhere, the two find themselves under attack on the parkway. Vincent takes a stab to the abdomen, and in a shocking turn, Thomas is kidnapped. Almost instantly, Rubino contacts Vincent, aware that he swiped the coke, demanding its delivery to his Luxus casino within three hours. The alternative? Retaliation from Novak and his family. Simultaneously, Jennifer delves into Vincent's life and history. In a public restroom, Vincent tends to his wounds when Sean enters, triggering an explosive confrontation. Vincent demands Sean retrieve the bag or face dire consequences for his son, suspecting Sean's involvement in the mix-up. Despite Sean swearing it was a mistake, he rushes to retrieve the bag. In a separate scene, Novak subjects his cousin, a DEA informant, to torturous interrogation. The intricate web of deceit and danger tightens as the plot unfolds. The man hanging upside down is revealed to be one of the individuals shot by Vincent and Sean during the bag heist. Novak, in a gruesome display, shoots him with pellets before instructing his henchmen to cruelly remove his cousin's tongue. Meanwhile, Thomas remains confined, awaiting Novak's decision. In the evening, Vincent, carrying the bag, journeys to Rubino's casino. En route, Dina calls, questioning the whereabouts of her son. Vincent claims they had a disagreement, and Thomas ran off, leaving her worried and searching for him. Upon reaching the casino, Vincent strategically conceals half of the contents in a garbage bag, suspending it from the ceiling above a stall in the men's room. He then proceeds upstairs to negotiate with Rubino for Thomas's release. Simultaneously, Jennifer, harboring suspicions of Vincent's betrayal, arrives at the casino to investigate. Upon spotting Vincent with the bag, 
Jennifer enters the bathroom to ascertain its contents, intensifying the suspense and intrigue in this unfolding tale. Jennifer, on a quest for evidence, begins her search inside the restroom. When the security guard identifies her as an agent, he discloses that Vincent had also been in the vicinity. Jennifer meticulously goes through the stalls, eventually discovering the bag of contraband. Swiftly, she contacts her co-worker, affirming her suspicion that Vincent is colluding with criminals. Meanwhile, Vincent is in the midst of negotiations for his son's release, proposing to hand over the remaining stash in 10 minutes. He discloses that he has hidden the other half and promises prompt delivery. Rubino, apprehensive as the stash belongs to Novak, a more ruthless criminal, reluctantly agrees to Vincent's terms, granting him a 10-minute window to secure the rest of the merchandise. The intricate dance between law enforcement, criminals, and personal stakes escalates. As Jennifer secures the contraband, she discreetly takes it to the women's locker room at the spa. Vincent, realizing the bag is missing, becomes increasingly anxious and launches a frantic search. Novak arrives at the casino, pressuring Rubino to procure the merchandise. In a bid for time, Rubino requests another 10 minutes and offers Novak a drink. Tensions rise as Novak starts threatening Rubino, hinting at the potential intervention of his father, who oversees a larger criminal organization. Security guards, unable to locate Vincent on surveillance cameras, watch as he maneuvers through ventilation pipes and reaches a laundry room. Transforming his appearance with a fancy costume, Vincent enters a storage room and begins substituting sugar for the actual contraband to deceive the criminals. Heading to the bar, Vincent instructs them to deliver a bottle of wine to Rubino's office. He then presents the bag filled with sugar, unveiling his true identity as a police officer in a bold move that adds a new layer of suspense to the unfolding events. Vincent, in a strategic move, lies and claims that the police are closing in, urging the criminals to escape through a hidden exit. As the waiter delivers the wine, the criminals, convinced it's the police, start to flee. Novak, thanks Vincent for the tip and departs, prompting Rubino to release Thomas and instruct Vincent to leave the casino. Later, Novak discovers the bag contains only sugar, prompting him to order his men back to the casino. Meanwhile, Vincent and Thomas attempt to leave, but Novak informs Rubino about the ruse and demands the actual merchandise. Determined, Rubino orders his henchmen to find Thomas and bring him back. Vincent and Thomas go into hiding, and Vincent's stab wound begins to bleed. In a moment of revelation, Vincent shares his involvement in a significant drug ring with his son. Abruptly, Rubino's thug ambushes them, initiating a fierce confrontation in a kitchen. The stakes escalate as the characters grapple with the consequences of their actions. In a bid to protect his father, Thomas intervenes, assisting Vincent in subduing the henchman. Vincent hurls the aggressor through a window into an office. Meanwhile, Novak instructs his henchman to promise a reward to anyone who brings Sean and Vincent to him. Vincent and Thomas, trying to escape through the club, face a setback as the henchman catches the boy on the dance floor. Novak issues a threat to Rubino, demanding the return of the contraband. Simultaneously, Jennifer and her co-worker search the casino for Vincent, but their efforts prove futile. Frustrated, the co-worker suggests returning to the department and resuming the investigation the next day. In a clever move, Vincent disguises himself as a hotel employee to avoid detection. However, his plans are thwarted when he encounters Jennifer, who recognizes him and gives chase. The pursuit unfolds into a tense fight between the two in one of the rooms, intensifying the suspense in this high-stakes narrative. Vincent successfully restrains Jennifer, chaining her to the bed. He opens up about his undercover role in the case, admitting to keeping this information from his family for two years. As Vincent explains, Rubino and the henchmen assault Thomas but inadvertently leave the door ajar. Taking advantage of the opportunity, Thomas escapes the room and steals Rubino's phone. Jennifer discloses the location of the hidden merchandise, prompting Vincent to head to the locker area. In the process, Jennifer breaks free, informing her partner Dennison of Vincent's whereabouts. Vincent searches for the bag but finds it missing. Dennison locates it, sparking a confrontation with Vincent. After a lengthy struggle, Vincent incapacitates Dennison in a hot tub, ensuring he doesn't drown. Meanwhile, Thomas, using Rubino's phone, contacts Vincent to share his location. At Vincent's request, Sean arrives at the casino, equipped with a police uniform, adding a new twist to the unfolding events. The intricate web of deception, loyalty, and danger continues to weave its way through the narrative. In a tense moment, a henchman arrives, engaging in a simultaneous exchange of gunfire with Sean. The hospital alerts Dina, who senses something is amiss and heads to the casino. As Vincent checks Rubino's phone, he stumbles upon a troubling message from Dennison. Shockingly, Dennison is collaborating with Novak, 
informing superiors about the missing narcotics and Vincent's potential involvement. Dennison and Jennifer discover Sean's lifeless body. As Jennifer calls for backup, the henchman silences Sean, aware of Dennison's dual allegiance. Dennison reveals to Jennifer that he plans to meet with backup, leading him to an encounter with Novak in the elevator. The revelation unfolds that Dennison protects Novak's enterprise by bribing other agents. Novak, anticipating police intervention, confronts Dennison, threatening him for failing to fulfill his paid duties. The intricate alliances and betrayals deepen, setting the stage for heightened suspense and escalating conflicts. Dennison reveals a trump card, mentioning a list in the department with Novak's data and his family details. Killing Dennison would jeopardize their business in Vegas. Vincent, determined to disrupt Rubino's plans, sparks chaos in the nightclub, battling against Rubino's henchmen. Using broken champagne bottles, he takes down the thugs before escaping with Thomas in an exhibition supercar. Novak, attempting to thwart their getaway, opens fire as Vincent and Thomas speed off. Meanwhile, Jennifer Dennison and fellow officers apprehend Rubino, halting his escape. As Vincent and Thomas reach the parking lot, they face pursuit from Novak's henchmen. Vincent, risking his safety, orders his son to drive away while he confronts the pursuing thugs. Novak deploys tear gas canisters in the garage, intensifying the challenge. In a desperate move, Vincent engages in a brawl with a henchman but succumbs to his injuries. As another goon approaches to finish the job, Thomas, now in an SUV, intervenes by hitting the assailant, adding a layer of suspense to the action-packed sequence. In a critical moment, a thug threatens to shoot Vincent and Thomas, but Dina arrives, wielding a gun she obtained, and eliminates the threat. Novak then approaches, firing an automatic rifle. Despite Vincent attempting negotiation, Novak shoots him in the chest. Vincent collapses but survives, retaliating by fatally shooting Novak. En route to the hospital, Vincent contacts Jennifer, exposing Dennison's corruption. Learning the truth, Jennifer attempts to confront Dennison but is shot by him. Dennison proceeds to kill Rubino and the driver, causing a crash. As other officers arrive, Dennison falsely claims Rubino's madness and blames him for Jennifer's death. However, Jennifer emerges from the car, instructing officers to arrest Dennison. Both Jennifer and Vincent are transported to the hospital. Dina and Thomas sit by Vincent's bedside when he regains consciousness, marking a pivotal moment in the aftermath of the intense confrontations. Jennifer enters Vincent's room, and he commends her on her police work. Later, the CSI team is clearing the garage where Novak and his henchmen were discovered murdered. Novak's phone rings, and the caller is revealed to be his father. A DEA agent, part of their network, answers the phone and notifies Novak's father about the issue, revealing the news of his son's demise. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell if you want to watch more videos like this. Thank you for watching and see you again soon. Take care.